Hey guys, welcome into this segment from our full length The Onside Kick podcast. In order to get the full podcast, go down to the description, go to blog talk radio backslash The Onside Kick to download the full thing. Enjoy, everybody. Well, and Mark, I guess we're going to move over to a team that yet again had promise last season, had them in my Super Bowl. The kiss of death was upon them. I had them as my Super Bowl winner, the Arizona Cardinals. And really, this preview comes down to one thing. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be the year Carson Palmer brings them to the Super Bowl and doesn't get injured and doesn't have any problems whatsoever? I don't know. Well, that, that's pretty much the preview. So you guys let us know down below what you guys think. Obviously, no, we're kidding. We're going to get into this. But really, Carson Palmer, yep. that's where we have to start with this one because the Cardinals are kind of handicapped to Carson Palmer. And they, yet again, didn't go out and make any strides. They didn't do the chief method of things of like, yeah, you know what? We probably need an heir apparent. Let's trade up to go get that. They did not do that. And they even had a lesser kind of peak to climb than the Chiefs in the draft. What do you expect from Carson Palmer this year in -hmm. what could be his last year in a Cardinal uniform? Could retire. Well, the thing about Carson Palmer last year, too, was it's not a terrible year. I mean, he threw for over four. gets injured. (laughs) Yeah, he threw for over 4,000 yards. You know, he he gets you 26 touchdowns, only four interceptions. Mm -hmm. It's a very typical kind of Carson Palmer type of season. Uh, of course, you know, injuries are always going to be a concern for Car- Carson Palmer. That's always going to be there. The thing about Carson as well is that there's always the lingering question of, is he a guy that can get you to the next level? That was the question that we always had uh, with Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. He finally got his team to the Super Bowl. Uh, it's a team that are uh, a question that we've seen with guys like Matt Stafford, like Phillip Rivers. These are guys who are always going to be good, but the question is, can they ever elevate their team? And Carson Palmer's done a great job with the Arizona Cardinals. Unfortunately, the Arizona Arizona Cardinals have been kind of falling off uh, in recent years. But the thing about this team is nothing about them was really terrible. They had a good passing game. The running game was fairly average. Uh, They scored points. They didn't let teams score on them a ton, Mm -hmm. more than you'd like, but not a ton. It was fairly uh, middle of the pack. Well, that happens when you got Patrick Patrick Peterson in the backfield for you. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing. We've been talking about on paper so much today. The Mm -hmm. Cardinals on paper make so much sense, and that's why you picked them last year to, of course, win a Super Bowl. Kiss of death. They make so much sense, and they have for so long. Um, It just continues to be a mystery. And we've talked about it so much with Marvin Lewis Mm -hmm. uh, over in Cincinnati land, but you have the when is enough enough for a guy like Carson Palmer. Mm -hmm. uh, When is enough enough where they're going to say, all right, we got to do something. That's exactly what the Chiefs did, saying Alex Smith is not really getting it done, so we got to get that next guy up, draft him, so that way we're ready to go and make a transition. And I don't want it to seem like they didn't bring any anybody and Trevor Knight is technically on the depth chart as the fourth quarterback, but kind of as a that lesser really count. Exactly. It's kind of like the CJ Beathard conversation we had for the Niners, except Trevor Knight's not going to play at all this year. Doesn't expect I wouldn't expect him to even suit up. That's basically where we're at with him because Blaine Gabbert and Stanton are ahead of him. The big question I kind of look at on the other side of the ball, though, is I mentioned Patrick Peterson. Who's going to play opposite to him? I mean, right now on the depth chart, according to rlads.com, it's Brandon Williams. But I look at the free agency, the one that I'm looking at from NFL.com, the big arrivals that they mentioned. You've got Antoine Batea, safety, Carlos Damsby, linebacker, Phil Dawson, kicker, Jarvis Jones, linebacker, no safety there, our cornerback there, pardon me. And when I look at the draft, who were the first two guys that you drafted? Hassan Riddick, I like him as a pass rusher and a either defensive end or inside linebacker, or, and then they go at Buda Baker, who it's like, yeah, that's secondary help, but it's safety, not cornerback. And I think that that's going to be a problem for the Cardinals this year is teams are going to go, oh, yeah, Patrick Peterson's over there. Let's just throw over here. We don't have to throw to our number one target to win games. We'll throw to our number two target. That's fine. Yeah. 
Um, it's totally possible. I mean, you can kind of shift things around mm-hmm. to hopefully combat that a little bit defensively. And as we all know, this is a team that knows what they're doing defensively. Um, to me, it's just that last year showed so much um, missed opportunity, mm-hmm. and that's kind of been a theme for for the Cardinals, unfortunately. Even these years where they're good and they have consistently good seasons, mm-hmm. they still fall short. And Larry Fitzgerald's not going to be here forever. Yeah, you know, at some point you have to, and same thing with Carson Palmer, you have to actually make it happen. Mm-hmm. You have to go out there and you have to do it. Um, and it's tough because the Seattle Seahawks are there. Mm-hmm. You don't really have much competition from the 49ers or the Rams. Uh, so that's not entirely concerning. It's this totally is, possible. This is the only team that can challenge the yeah. Seahawks for the top, though. And, and that's the way it's been. Mm-hmm. That's the way it's been since Harbaugh left uh, San Francisco. Yeah. And by left, I mean was basically shown Forced the door. Out, yeah. um, and it's totally possible. They can go. They can win mm-hmm. uh, this division. They can make waves in the playoffs. Um, it's just the kind of thing where... You see last year, a year that didn't go the way that they obviously had hoped, a year where the team wasn't bad. They were not a bad team. I mean, David Johnson for uh, 1,200 yards, Larry Fitzgerald, of course, being over 1,000 yards, Carson Palmer over 4,000 yards, and yet somehow you still kind of get this mediocre 7-8-1 record, essentially at 500. Mm-hmm. Um just an overall disappointing type of season, but maybe who knows? Maybe that's the kind of thing that's going to really rev up these engines, light that fire under them, and say, "Hey, we're not invincible. You know, we're not untouchable. People can come up and get us, and they can affect us, and we can lose." So maybe this is something that they needed last year. Well, and the big thing and everything that I'm looking at, I haven't seen any update to it. The last update I see is from late May. When a ton of people were saying Larry Fitzgerald will talk post-2017 plans at training camp. And the thing that I look at is with his contract, because he's a big part of this offense as well, you have a club option for next year. So after this year, they have a club option for just under $5 million. However, after this season, do you think there's a good chance Larry Fitzgerald goes, yep, my career is over. I'm done. Like I, mm-hmm. I've done all I could, and you know what? Or is it? Or could you see him going one more thing of like, you know what? Ray's last ride. Next year's my last year. I'm gonna finish out this contract all the way through. Yeah. If you guys want to take me back with the club option, he is such a team player. He is Class such a too. loyal guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a hometown type of guy here. Um, you know I. I expect him to announce before he leaves, before he retires, before he calls it done. Well, I don't I'm assuming it, I'm assuming it with everything training mm-hmm. camp, he's going to say whether he's going to retire or not at the end yeah. of the year. And I feel like they wouldn't make a big deal about it right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, who knows? Because, you know, media needs to sell stories. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like they wouldn't make as big of a deal about it if it wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. If you're not going to retire, Larry would probably just say, yeah, I'm not going to retire. Yeah. It'd be pretty simple. So kind of feel like it has to happen. And I feel like he would give that kind of, hey, this is the end, almost out of respect, Mm -hmm. you know, out of respect for all the fans, out of respect for everything he's done for football, for uh, for the Cardinals as well. Because nothing is worse from a um, front office standpoint getting to the end of the year where it's like, yep. Now I'm going to leave. Oh, shoot. Mm-hmm. That was a need I didn't think we'd expect. Yeah. If he tells them in training camp of this year, yeah, this is going to be my last year, they have an entire year to kind of plan, okay, we got to fill that hole. Yeah. Because our next wide receiver on the on the depth chart is John Brown, who John Brown is no pushover, but John Brown isn't Larry Fitzgerald. No one is. Um, but I, I also think it's something for the fans, too, of mm-hmm. letting them know. It's coming to a close. This is an era that's ending. Um, you know, if you want to come say hi, basically, you know, <laughs> it's like when they announce like two months before somebody at work is retiring. So that yep. way you got plenty of time to schedule mm-hmm. your lunch with them uh, and talk or, with them. Or I know uh, 
what we have. It's like, okay, two weeks they're leaving. We're going to have a party for them here in the office. Yeah. So bring in food. And you kind of have that time to where it's like, yeah, you know what? This person's leaving. I can kind of, mm-hmm. y- y- you go by their cube, knock on the cube, kind of have that conversation with them where it's like, hey, you know what? It's been great spending time with you here at work. Yep. And um, I I kind of have a feeling that this might be the year, though, for the Cardinals where you have both Palmer and Fitzgerald walk out together. Because if Larry says at the end of, like, at, at training camp this year, yeah, this year is it. I kind of have a hard feeling mm-hmm. that Carson Palmer would be like, would I play next year knowing that yeah. my main wide receiver is not going to be there? To mm-hmm. where if we draft, like if you if a rookie falls into your lap that's a prime rookie, yeah. you got to build up a camaraderie with him? Or is it just like, you know what, Larry's done, I'm done, I've, I'm injured and too we, much. And we've seen it in the past with Carson Palmer too mm-hmm. where when he knows that a team doesn't have a chance, he's done. Mm-hmm. He leaves. He gets out of that team. He gets out of that situation. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it here uh, for sure. I think that the biggest thing for the Cardinals is they honestly, they control their own destiny here. They're either going to go out there and they're going to make that one last ride or they're going to continue being this kind of uh, not impressive, disappointing um, season. Like we had last year for now, them. I expect them to come out with a little bit of fire because, I mean, the defense – most of the same guys coming back. The offense, I mean, the big thing that solidifies them is that run game with Ellington and uh, David Johnson back for them. To me, it's really the big questions come at wide receiver. It's like with Josh Brown, is he going to be able to be the ultimate complement to Fitzgerald this year? And also Fitzgerald, is this going to be his last season? And with Carson Palmer, is he going to get injured? Is he going to retire? What kind of a year do we expect from him? Mm -hmm. This Cardinal team, I think, is on the line, though, where it's like this year I could, if you said the Cardinals, they're going to compete this year for the NFC West and make the playoffs, I'd be like, okay, I could see it. But if you said, yeah, they're just kind of going to be there and then fizzle out, I'd be like, yeah, I could see it. Like I could see either way going for this team, and that's why to me with this division – they are the biggest question mark in the NFC West. Because we know the Niners and the Rams, not playoff teams, probably top 10 teams in the draft, maybe even top five teams in the draft. The Seahawks, playoff team, going to be fighting for the division and Mm -hmm. looking to win a Super Bowl. But with the Cardinals, it's which way are you going to lean this year? Are you going to lean towards that we're winning the division and going for a Super Bowl mm-hmm. or lean back towards the, yeah, we got to retool. A, yeah. a term we love to use here in Chicago. We're not rebuilding. We're retooling, guys. That's right. We're retooling. But before we move on to the Seahawks and welcome in Lars um, Russell from FieldGoals.com, any last thoughts on the Arizona Cardinals? Um, just that it'll be a very uh, sad day when Larry Fitzgerald does retire. No, it will be. And one of the most respectable players in the NFL. And that's going to be one where it's like he is a Cardinal through and through. And, and he probably are, should have left a million times. Maybe, but this is probably, I, I'm assuming this might be the last year for mm-hmm. Larry Fitzgerald. And he might at training camp say, yeah. yeah, you know what, I'm done. And just for anyone that wants to yell at me, it's because the man deserves a ring and you didn't get him, <laughs> you didn't give him one. He does deserve He, he, he ha- deserves it. Hey, I will defend that because he should have had his chance. But, but does he was, have it? There was, wait, there was that one call in that Super Bowl against the Steelers where it was a block in the yeah. back and it should have been called, but it wasn't. But... Cherry picking, Ricky. Cherry Cherry picking. picking. That's right. That's right. But they should have had that Super Bowl against the Steelers. I was actually rooting for them Mm -hmm. in that Super Bowl. But this is where you guys, Cardinal fans, let us know down below in the comment section. What do you guys expect coming into this season? Mark and I, this has kind of been like the tone I've been feeling during this segment is kind of like a mourning segment. Like we're mourning this Cardinal team before the season even starts. Let us know down below what you guys think. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that segment from the onside kick. If you think the fun stops there, you're wrong because click the video right over here. What are you thinking? Come on. Click it. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. Bye, everybody.